thank you, Frank, and thank everyone for being here today. Um, if there are any questions, we have a microphone. I'm not certain if any of our illustrious media has descended today, even though we've been well documented. Um, are there any questions at this time? I think we've probably said everything that needs to be said at the moment. All right, well, don't give up. We got one question. But well, we need a microphone again. Fair not a media is not here. Is the media that is not here part of a deliberate conspiracy to withhold information? And if they are, is that not uh, also a, an admission of collective uh, uh, a treason? Uh, basically, the media existing in a state of collective treason. That's my question. It's a hard one. Yeah, that's a hard question. The question is, uh, is the media part of a concerted conspiracy to uh, ignore this event. And if I were to answer uh, that in the affirmative, I would be asked to prove that. And so I'm not gonna speculate. What we do know is that in the last nine years, everything about 9-11 has been underreported, marginalized, and ignored by the media, uh, except very little. Yeah. Why is it equally ignored in the so-called progressive media? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, I, I think there's, uh, does anyone want to tackle that one? Hi, hi, Michelle Phillips. I just like to uh, uh, respond to that by saying that Tom Hartman this morning on uh, K Talk Radio uh, has dedicated his entire show to this subject, and uh, he's on for three hours, so he's probably still on talking about it now. But I agree with you; a, a very small percentage of the media has uh, weighed in. Thank you. Uh, what remains for us is whether the media shows up today as we know them, uh, is for us to continue to speak, continue to be activists in this regard. And uh, there's a meeting at Emmanuel Presbyterian Church on Saturday. And these are the places where the information will continue to be spread and it will educate the public until we get what we want. I just, wanted, I just wanted to remind everyone, it's already been stated, but I want to repeat it, that this press conference is happening simultaneously in New York City and in Washington, D.C. with Richard Gage and the, act, uh, the architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth. So that's four, new, four groups, and they are celebrating their 1,280th member, the architects and engineers, whereas these other three groups are new. So we just wanted to rep, you know, repeat that because it's such a wonderful, wonderful new fact. Thank you, Joseph. You want to ask a question? <laughs> Everybody. Yeah, let them hear your question. <laughs> well, I just want to say I've been a 9-11 Truth activist for more than five years, and there's a lot of great expertise and a lot of knowledge behind me here. One of the things that's bothered me the most through the years is the fact that it's my understanding that the highest power in this land is not the executive branch or the Congress. At the local level, it's actually the sheriffs. And if, if, the, if the executive branch is actually in breach of, of their uh, responsibilities and, their, and there's a corruption going on, and, and the implication of 9-11 truth is that there was an intentional a conspiracy within the government to, per to perpetrate such events, 
What I want to know is why isn't there a sheriff through 911 Truth? I have a brother that's a sheriff, so I can bring him on board. I've got I've got a dozen people in my family that are military officers, and there's a lot of other people around here. I've been with police officers that have slammed their batons down in their desk, put in uh, DVDs into the lockers of the fellow police officers, wanting to know the truth. But what I want to know is when are we going to have sheriffs for 9/11 Truth? Because that is the only power structure that I know of that can oversee the FBI branches of the military, the media, and all this. So thank you very much. That's my question. David Chandler wanted to respond, I think, to the media question. Yeah? I wanted to respond to the I wanted to respond to the earlier question about uh, the media. And there's a, a, those of you who've seen my work, I, I've done a lot of videos I put up on YouTube. And one of the recent ones is uh, we're uncovering audio in uh, some of the video clips that actually have good audio of explosions preceding the fall of Building 7. So NIST claims it came down from a fire, and it claims the noises people heard were from the collapse. But there actually were explosions that preceded the collapse that you can hear. One of the, well, one thing that's amazing to me is there's so many videos where that little tiny slice has been removed. And it's not clear why. Some of this has been released from NIST, and that's pretty clear. They had their hands on it, and there's just a, just like a missing gap in the Watergate tapes. It's like, boom, it's just not there. During the time when we know there was a loud explosion and cameras that should have gotten it, uh, well, they didn't play that part. One of the videos has Amy Goodman right there in the front, and she's in the progressive media, and the audio is just, missing. I don't know why, but it's just one in a whole list of videos. And here's one where it shows her responding to the collapse of Building 7. And the cameraman somehow had the audio off, and then after the building fell, the audio came back on. Or was the audio removed? I mean, it, the whole thing. Amy Goodman will not touch this. And I want to call Amy Goodman to respond to really what happened to Building 7. She's been asked many times, and she's dodged the question many times. But that gets as progressive as you can get, and she needs to come clear on this, as well as a lot of other people. Dave Gap, uh, Lieutenant Colonel. I'd also like to respond to the question on the media. What you can do as American citizens, you can go around the media. This is what we do in our San Diego 9-11 Truth activism. You're all activists. You can do whatever you can do. Literally, every weekend when we're down in San Diego doing an outreach, and you can YouTube, Google, whatever you want, 9-11 Truth outreaches, um, we have thousands of people that stop by. Go to where people are. We give out hundreds of DVDs, hundreds of professionally done pamphlets and brochures. You can get the message out there without the media, but it takes a concerted effort. And, and talk to your family, talk to your friends, but more important, don't keep quiet about 9-11 truth. The truth will come. Any more questions or comments at this time? Okay, come on up. It's much easier that way. <laughs> um, yeah, as far as the uh, Sheriff's Department, you're right on about that. And uh, Sheriff Mack did uh, organize Oath Keepers in regards to that. And actually, his aim is to reach anybody who's taken an oath whether it's police, sheriff, military, what have you. Uh, and I would urge you to uh, spread the word on that because absolutely we need that uh, section pulled into this movement. But the other question I have for Colonel Gap and Colonel Bowman is what sense can you give us of what active military feel about this movement? 
I know they're uh, handicapped in what they can say publicly, but privately, how do they feel? Well, I live in a uh, community of retired military officers, and uh, they're a mixed bag. Uh, the folks on active duty, I think, are a good cross-section of the American people. And so I know a lot of them know about 9-11 Truth. The officer corps in our services they're very highly educated, and I think that among them, the majority understand these things. There has been a battle going on in the Pentagon for many years for the heart and soul of this country. I weighed in on that with an open letter to the generals and admirals from, you know, an old uh, junior officer. and. Telling, reminding them of their oath of office to the Constitution and the Constitution's requirement to uphold treaty law. And among them, of course, is the UN Charter. And so I reminded them that if anyone comes down from the executive branch and says, nuke Iran, that they should not only refuse that order, but they should consider whether the circumstances warrant arresting whoever gave the order as a war criminal. <clears throat> For the media, I'd like to say that uh, the question was originally asked by Chris Condon over there, who is the host of the new KPFK show, uh, that uh, folks were talking about, I'll be on the first one. I'd like to thank KPFK and KPFA who have both had me on talking about this subject in the last two weeks. They're one small courageous part of the media. We've got, got to grow it. We've got to make sure that we get the truth on CBS, ABC, NBC, MSNBC, CNN, forget Fox. <laughs> but we are making progress and I think we're winning. I like to think of what Gandhi said. First, they ignore you, then they ridicule you. Then they attack you. Then you win. Well, they are attacking us, so we are winning. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bowman. We're going to close now. So thank you again for coming out. Uh, remember, there's many excellent websites to get your information and to spread to other people. Pilots for 9-11 Truth, Firefighters for 9-11 Truth, Patriots for 9-11 Truth. Uh, and the event on Saturday here in Los Angeles, Emanuel Presbyterian Church on Wilshire, will be the 9-11 Truth um, Memorial event, which happens every year. And that's an excellent place to come out and support. Thank you very much.